you got to find find what what you love playing because the only way you're going to keep going is if you if you really enjoy it. Welcome to the Passion Behind the Art show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pinnock. Well, I am super excited to welcome Joseph Belf on the Passion Beyond the Art show. He's a great musician, and I, I'm excited to hear his story. Joseph, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome, man. Awesome. So how did your musical journey start? When did you know that you wanted to be a musician? Okay, so, well, back in the, back in the day, maybe nine years ago, I was just one of those kids who... Um, you know, played a bit of guitar here and there, enjoyed a bit of strumming. And and then I think over time I started looking on YouTube and that was when I found the style of fingerstyle guitar. Mm. And fingerstyle guitar, at, at that time, obviously, it, was, it wasn't it was extremely popular, um, but, like, I was just completely blown away. I, I did not know how what was going on and it was so much, like, different there's so many different parts and I had to figure out how to do it and I spent quite a long time uh, you know I told myself I'm gonna do this I'm not sure why I'm not sure why I put myself through that but I'm, uh, I'm pretty glad I did <laughs> so around what age was that um, I must have been 10 years old I okay think. okay okay so yeah. so now you're pretty much you're you're excellent at this um you this style of guitar like when people hear your music what are you trying to what what do you want them to experience um obviously yeah i I love for them to feel um happy as such but i you know as as an instrumentalist it's it's different um compared to a singer as such right but uh, i do i do like to try and feel like a, I'm telling a story, I want the audience to feel what I'm feeling and, um, you know, through the music because, uh, you know, we don't have lyrics to communicate as instrumentalists, so um, I try my best to, you know, convey the message through my playing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, so now you're on, on this journey, I mean, how... How did you know that? You know, I mean, how did you even get started in starting to put yourself out there and all of that stuff? How did you even decide to do that? What made you wanted to do that? Um, I guess well, I was uh, when I was starting out, I was in uh, intermediate school and or primary school, sorry. And um, you know, you know how you have those showcases or talent shows or or whatnot. That was like kind of my goal, and I really wanted to to do those. And um, you know, my first time on stage uh, was so so nerve wracking, uh, but it felt great afterwards because everyone everyone was so nice to me. And so you know, knowing that how nice people were to me, and it, it felt really good. Oh. So I just tried to play out there more and more, just in my little town, and. Um, Actually, what what really uh, was a big step for me was going out of town and going to um, a place called Dunedin, uh, which is about an hour and a half away, and that's where I played my first open mic night, and nobody knew who I was, and um, they just they loved me, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is awesome! Like I just kept kept trying to find new places to play. So okay, yeah. so when you say where where are you? Where are you from? I'm from Omaru, um, okay. s- small town, kind of uh, fourteen thousand people, uh, just down in the South Island of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So, <laughs> what would you say was the hardest part of like trying to build this this um, thing that you got going on? Trying to build your audience, trying to build everything. Um, I think the the hardest, well, the 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 biggest kind of thing I had to overcome in this journey was probably having no teacher mm. um, but in the end I obviously uh, I've preferred to take that path um, because I mean having no teacher it just 
it took me such a long time to figure out how to play it, but the fact that I am able to figure out my figure it out myself meant you know I kind of you know I I discovered it myself, mm-hmm. so I, I felt that that was an advantage once I overcome that thing. So. Okay. And then I could just keep going, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah. for majority, for a large part of the journey, you kind of was teaching yourself, probably watching videos and just practicing on your own. Yeah, mo- most of the time, um, like YouTube and stuff. But I did, I did buy um, these lesson DVDs mm-hmm. from. Um, do you know Adam Rafferty? I've heard all? of it. Yeah, he's he's a funky guitarist, and I I did get a lot of stuff from him. And um, you know, I was I was looking for video lessons and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what 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 would you say you were doing to kind of grow your audience on like Instagram and stuff like that? What were some of the things that you knew that you did that helped you to grow? Um. I well, I think on Instagram I started. I, it was like it was kind of a personal page up until last halfway through last year, mm. um, and I you know because most of my friends or all of my friends knew like I was I was the guitarist and whatnot, but I wanted to see what I could do, so I started making videos in my room, um, making sure they were like reasonably good and had quality um, mm-hmm. sound and whatnot, and I. Almost tripled my following with within like half that year. So, um, yeah, that I just posting fairly consistently. I mean, I could I could probably do a lot better, um, but that's you know it's a good start for me, and I'm probably going to go pretty hard on Instagram this year in 2018. So okay, okay. So yeah, who are the people you kind of surround yourself? Who would you say the people that kind of give you energy? You surround yourself to help you to grow. Um, well, from the beginning, my, my parents, they've, they've always been, um, really supportive. Um, uh, some cases they have to push me cause I can be a little, a little bit slack sometimes, <laughs> but, um, uh, like, yeah, I mean, when I was, when I was that young kid doing my first performances and stuff, um, you know, my friends and family, uh, my parents, you know, they they'll support me through that. Um, but nowadays it's, it's just you know the people who follow me i i try and uh, keep them engaged and and uh yeah my parents are always helping me with what you know new ideas of what to what i might be able to do after i leave university and mm-hmm. stuff so okay yeah. so as we talk about leaving university what would you say is next what's next what are you trying to what's some of the things that you're trying to maybe in 2018 to accomplish what's next um well it's it's hard to know for for me but uh i i i finished uni in 2020 i believe Mm -hmm. and um i'm hoping well it's always been a dream of mine to be a solo artist and perform as a like uh do you know tommy emmanuel Uh, i think so i think so yeah, he's he's just a solo guitarist and he does concerts all around the world. Mm-hmm. I've always had that had that dream, um, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get there straight straight away. So um, I've always had the idea of session music mm-hmm. um, and working with as many people as possible. Because in the future, when you have all those connections, uh, you're pretty much unstoppable. So. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So, what is the, the 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 what is the music scene like in New Zealand? Like, especially when it comes to instrumentalists, people that play people instruments. Um, it's it's good. It's definitely good. Like, there are some insane insane musicians here, um, but there are just not that many. Um, oh. Yeah, you know, especially down the South Island. It's probably more up north, but. Um, there's not really many in New Zealand that I know of who are doing the same st- stuff as me, um, which is, you know, I, I might end up going to Australia, Europe, or, or America, mm-hmm. and um, 
you know, try and actually make a proper career there because I'm not sure if, um, you know, it, it might be quite hard to, to make a full-on living, especially being so young so in okay. New Zealand. So, yeah. I got you. I got you. Makes sense. It makes sense. So when you're not playing the guitar, what are you doing? What's something that you like to do? What's one hidden thing that no one knows that Joseph likes to do? <coughs> um, I play... A lot of uh, badminton, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, okay. It's, yeah, I've been playing for maybe four years now, and I play for my um, my region. So I do trainings every every week and stuff. So yeah, okay. it's, it's it's awesome. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't expect that one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not many things with it. Like, it's a good way to keep in shape, though. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So. Um, I mean, you've been doing well. I like how you present yourself. I mean, some of the 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 the, the character that you show, you make your videos pretty fun. Um, what advice would you have for musicians? Um, well, I'd probably give the advice that I wanted to hear when I was younger. So, um. If, if you're a musician who's trying to get better and trying to build yourself, I'd say play what you want to play and, you know, learn what you want to learn and, you know, try and branch out to as many different genres even as well because that can, you know, versatility is a, is a key, key um, aspect of being a good musician, I guess. So... Yeah, just playing what you want to play. You know, some sometimes I yeah you know, I know a few friends of mine who don't really enjoy what they do because um, they haven't really found their their niche in, in, in music. So yeah, just you got to find find what what you love playing because the only way you're gonna keep going is if you if you really enjoy actually playing. So that that'd be my advice. Makes sense, makes sense. So on that note, are you ready to play a little something for us? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Let's make it happen. Sure. I'll play um, Strutton by Jerry Reed. Okay. Yep. Can you hear can you hear this one? Perfect. Cool. That was awesome, bro. That was awesome. That <laughs> was awesome. That was awesome. So if people want to learn more about you, where can they go to find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Joseph Belf. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Joseph Belf Guitarist, or Facebook, Joseph Belf Guitarist. Awesome, awesome. Well, Joseph, thank you for being on the podcast, man. I really appreciate thank you sharing you. your story, bits and pieces of your story for me. Thanks so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Any way I can help, I definitely, I love what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Cool. Thank you, right. Daryl. Cheers. Bless it. I want to say thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you want to get in touch with me, you can reach me at dpcreates 
on Instagram or Twitter. And please leave me a review on iTunes because that helps the podcast to grow. Thanks again. Be blessed.